Hey, what's up, YouTube? Welcome to Play It Pain of Life. Hope you guys are having a good Tuesday evening. We're going to get started here in a few minutes, so uh, let me just open up the chat. Uh, and then we're going to go do our stuff, right? We're going to go do our things. Uh, as you can tell, tonight's topic is going to be the Court of Owls. So let's go ahead and get started there. I'm going to take a minute to just set up our chat. Um, so if you're watching this on playback, skip ahead a minute or two, or just run, go get yourself something to drink. Got yourself something to drink. Let's do that. Let's do, uh, live streaming. And let's, probably says that the stream here is bad. What the? What? What? I want to go there. So, uh, let's see what kind of greed we View status bad. No. I don't think it's bad. I think we're all right. Well, we'll, we'll see how we do, okay? So, anyways, here's what we got going on. Uh, we're working on the Court of Owls tonight. Here's Henry Ballard. Uh, so, I'm going to... We're going to just kind of, I guess, knock out these owls as we can. And, uh, you know, if you have any questions, any comments, anything like that, I should, well, there we go. Let's, let's, let's keep this a little more central to the discussion. Whoa, that was bad. That was bad. Yeah, cried. Man. <laughs> All right. Hold on. I gotta. I am, because I can't open a wet palette properly. I'm gonna have to change the palette, the paper on my palette. Okay, so hold on one second, guys. I'll be right back. Two seconds, I promise. It's not bad. Just like, just all the colors I had mixed from last night look like they. Kind of squashed into each other. So I'm going to rectify that real quick. I'll be back in a snap. Okay, I guess while we're doing this and gotta change it anyways, I might as well show you guys my homemade wet palette, okay? So pretty simple, pretty simple stuff. Basically, you take yourself a little sandwich, a lunch sandwich thing, and you cut out a little square of your favorite chamois. I think I have a little too much water in my wet palette right now. So you can actually, you can like dab some off, you can do whatever. I'm going to just dab a little bit of it off there. Um, so you take that, you cut your favorite little, these are like those orange towels you get at Home Depot, like those chamois things. Then you go out and you get yourself some parchment paper that is the same size as like hamburger for like, for those big hamburger patties. And they are the right size to go into this apparatus. Oops. And you just, you, you kind of just drop it in there. There's a little positioning involved here that apparently I'm good at doing on camera. But here we go. Right? Just like that. Okay. And you kind of let your paper settle in there. You can see if it's going to form up a nice little, nice little seal there. And there you go. You got yourself a homemade wet palette. Costs next to nothing. Super cheap. Like I said, you can get this at like get this at the dollar store for like maybe maybe two dollars on the outside. You can get the towel at Home Depot. I don't know. That'll probably cost you like three or four dollars for like a giant two pack. 
you cut a square, you get some parchment paper and you're good. Anywho, let's get to the painting because that's that's kind of what we're here to do. So we're going to start with Mr. Henry Ballard here. And he needs a little more action on the gold bits of his outfit. So we're going to use some Palomino gold. And just, this is already a fairly thin color to begin with. Thin it with a little bit of water. And we're going to, we're going to bring out the gold a little bit more in these areas of his, of his costume. So the little, like, he has like an owl belt buckle thing here. Which we're gonna not really gonna dry brush, more like over brush. And we're gonna kind of bring this up a little bit. Right. Right, just those like knee pad parts. He actually the little rims on his goggles are also gold. So we'll give him a little gold there. It's not a whole lot of color on this dude. If you want to know what uh, color I used for this gray, it is fairly interesting. I made my own. I I made my own wash out of um, a P3 Armor Wash Glaze Medium uh, and a little bit of Vallejo German Gray. And got it down to, you know, all the consistency of a wash, you know, down to where it was like a null oil. And that's what's allowed me to do this number, right? Okay. So there's that. <clears throat> and really, all the only stuff that needs to be done on this guy is like a little bit of black and a little bit of white. And he is essentially done. And that's going to kind of be the story on most of these. This is the second, the back half of the Court of Owl set that I've been uh, painting my way through. Uh, you know, slower commission project that, you know, I, I picked up last week because I was... Uh, not going to get be able to get much painting done last week just due to work stuff but now we're we're ready to knock this one out right we're ready to finish this one off move on to better stuff should have finished it last night when i had but you know it's about an hour's worth of painting left in these okay Cool. So there's that. The last thing we have to do here is we need some black gray. And we're going to stick that into a little. We're just going to use it to kind of, uh, we're going to use it on the harness here. We're going to use it on certain parts of the outfit to kind of darken things up, right? Provide a little more. Just a little more contrast to the, the outfit. It's all looking pretty uniform gray, but I mean, that is that is the outfit, right? I mean, that is Henry Ballard here. He's just a mix of different black colors, right? He has, that's just kind of how this guy's set up. So that color there on the sleeve, it's going to be darker there, darker here, a little darker there. Uh, I think this part here is also darker. And then, and then uh, on the, the harness, these are darker. 
Great. So this is just giving us some differentiation in his outfit. Right? That's darker. Just kind of make those darker. It's like he has some sort of like overall thing going on here. And then this outfit, this part of the outfit underneath the the owl sort of, we'll call it an owl kilt for lack of a better term. Should be darker as well. And then we're gonna use a, a little bit of a wash to kind of burnish the gold. Okay, because it's like a non-metallic gold. And so we got that all squared away. So there's a little bit of a two-tone nature to the model. It's just it's just all black though. You know what I mean, it's like painting Batman basically. This guy here. So not the most exciting miniature to paint. <clears throat> but pretty cool nonetheless. Pretty cool. I'm going to I'm going to take a little bit of white and kind of just dot two tiny little dots in the lenses, right, just to, just to give the illusion of there being right, little gems. <clears throat> okay, then we're going to go ahead and... We're gonna give the non-metallic gold a little bit of a burnish. And just accomplish that with some of my ink glaze. Sepia black and uh, sepia black and glaze medium. And that's how I make these. And it's just gonna, right? It just gives you a little bit of warmth on these things. And then, you know, can always go back and <clears throat> I like those once that's dry. Okay. We're gonna take a quick detour here and we're gonna head over to the owls. Right? So these these tiny little owl guys. that just need a little more love a little more love i'm gonna give a uh, black rim there on the eyes All right and let's pull off a bunch of that so you can see the yellow the yellow eye right there good and then i know you can Barely see any of this on camera. I apologize for that. And give a little bit of color here on the bill and the feet. All right. And then we're just really, like I said, we're we're going to use kind of washes to uh, to bring some color into these guys okay so i need specifically i need uh seraphim sepia if i can find it looks like i got a bunch of other washes here on my desk please don't hide seraphim sepia wait there it is it's a little seraphim sepia is a way to get a little more 
red brown into the color of the owl and also help bring in more detail. All right. You can see I'm just going to apply it around the detail of the owl's face. All right. It's a nice, you can see it's already doing a, a really good job kind of defining the other parts of this owl. This looks like the burrowing owl. This is kind of a nice, the burrowing owl is going to be kind of this mid-tone color. And the sepia is doing a good job kind of bringing that in. Okay. Well, not much to do there, but there's that. Okay. When we get to the uh, the great horned owl, what is this guy? He has a nice. You can. He's got tiny little eyes. My great horned owl. We're gonna again get the. Get the bill there and a little bit of that color on the feet. Right? And this guy should get like a more of a sepia tone uh, on him. So we'll we'll use we'll use more of that upper shade. Right? And this is going to give him a, a really good amount of detail there. And with, you see how like fine all this detail is? Like you don't want to paint and lose all that. So you really, you when it's super fine detail like this, I'm already thinking like, okay, I'm going to get it a basic color. And I want that color to interact with whatever uh, ink or wash I'm thinking of using in order to, you know, get me to the final, my final outcome color. Okay. So this is pretty good. This gets me to my final outcome color here. Right. Um, it does need a little bit of a white just like a white overbrush here. And again, we got to be very careful not to kill the super, super fine detail that is on this guy. All right, so we're going to, I'm just going to almost like stipple the white on. All right. So I want the white to, I want it to stand out. All right. What you don't, what you don't want to end up doing is like doing these like, giant brush strokes on it and killing all this fine detail that the, the miniature has. Pieces like this can be very difficult to figure out how to approach, you know, without totally killing, you know, what the, what the, the sculpt like you really have to be pretty delicate here to get to pick off, you know, parts of the parts of the chest here, the chest feathers, which are lighter. But it's it's funny because you have, you're kind of a desire to overpaint this stuff, and eat. that's like the last thing you want to do. Really just, you know, go simple and it'll look great. Now, essentially on the third owl, who is the, the barn owl, that's, we're just going to take that approach over this whole owl. There's not, because the barn, owl, barn owls are a lot lighter than the other two. I'm going to drop a little color here on the bill, just like we did on the other ones. And a little color here on the feet. So 
the rest of this is just going to be like super delicate highlighting. All right, just a little bit of white on the brush, and it's almost like you're it's almost like you're stippling. You want the you want certain edges to pop, like the the ridge line around the face of the owl. You want the area here right above the bill to pop. Can you even see a barn owl without thinking about the movie Labyrinth? Or is that just me? It could just be me. I always think a lot. Every time I, I, I see a barn owl, they absolutely love barn owls. I think of Labyrinth. Because you should think of the movie Labyrinth. Just my opinion. You should constantly be thinking about that movie. <laughs> Okay, so again, by gently and delicately picking out the detail in this owl, it should start to look pretty damn cool. I mean, these owls have some great, really minute detail to them. I just did not think I would like them as much as I do. Uh, I think they, I think they really are good sculpts. Kind of want them now. <laughs> Oops. Now, stop. I will, I'm not playing Batman, but I love painting it. Court of Owls is always one of my favorites too, both aesthetically and I love their. Their background as well. I still have my metal quarter valves for Batman, but I'll probably just sell them off. Not because I don't like them. It's just I don't I don't see a reason to play them. They don't. Uh, right. If I'm gonna play Batman, I'm probably gonna play Hatter, who is my favorite. Okay, back to some of these. All right. So here's the Lady of the Court here. You can see there's quite a bit of work already done on her. First thing we're going to do right now is we're going to shade her hair. All right, and give her hair a little bit of shadow to it. Decided not to do platinum blonde. We're going to just go with more of a, a dirty blonde there. And then I want to give her a little bit of a drink, right? And this is a, again, we're into the, we're into some delicate detail now. That is if I ever find the color I need, and which I might not. That, that might be a thing. I might have to give up on everything that I'm explaining right now. <laughs> it's really starting to look that way, isn't it? Ah! Oh, here we go. Okay. So, I'm imagining she's drinking a martini. And I'm going to get, I'm going to try to do this as delicately as possible. It's going to take a tiny little spot of blue ink. All right. I'm just going to kind of splash the bottom of the glass there. Because it, it seems dumb. I've seen the pictures of them, of this done with, um, with like red to insinuate like she's drinking wine. But what kind of asshole drinks wine out of a martini glass? Maybe a Court of Owls asshole? Maybe, but not this asshole. She's, uh, 
she's going to be content to drink that. The other thing I'm debating here is whether or not her skin needs a lighter tone to it. I like the red where it's at. The, uh, the, the highlighting and the shading on the red is actually quite nice. I'm pretty happy with this, if I'm being honest with you. Let's, uh, let's pick off the, let's, let's, let's um, stipple more white, though. On the stole, I agree that that needs to be like we need to pick off the, the white on the stole. Not sure about the skin. Maybe her skin should be more fair. Maybe. I just don't know. Like, I'm fairly happy with it. I'm fairly happy with the mini. Oh, I do actually need to burnish her little, the little gold bangle she has on her, on her wrist. So that's the thing. Let's go ahead and do that. Because she has a gold bangle right there. No one's going to see that level of detail. Maybe. But I will. I'll know it's there. It'll bug me if I didn't do it. There we go. Yeah, I don't know. I, yeah, I'm not. No, I'm, I'm cool. I'm not, we're not doing any more there. All right, moving on. Moving on. So we got to do the same thing for this guy. Although before we shade his hair... I want to paint the strap of the mask in. Apparently, he's the strap cuts all the way across the back of his head like that. In fact, it looks like it looks like there's even a little bit of it on his head. Like on the top of his head. I don't know if that's a mold line or I can't tell. I can't tell. He's already looking pretty damn cool though, right? This guy does not need much else. I may give him well, no, I think I gave him the edge highlight he needs. He's the the suit looks good, the texture looks good on the suit. I'm going to give a, his hair here a little bit of a, a wash. Yeah, I think that's just a super shitty mold line on his head. I don't know. Yeah. But he looks cool. Yeah, he looks cool. All right, moving on. <laughs> We're just, we're cooking through. We're cooking, people. We're, we're going, we're going fast. Okay. 1880s owl. Now, this model does have some finer nuance to it. Namely, the gladius here, the gladius. Is it gladius or gladius? How do you pronounce that? I don't know. Just making fun of somebody for not being able to use the word melee properly. He kept saying, you know, you guys might be, you guys might know this channel. And if you do, I'm sorry. I'm talking, I'm talking shit, but it, it, I gotta admit, it drives me crazy. It, it does. Okay. Um, this person says melee attack instead of melee attack. And I know, I'm, I know I'm, I'm, Splitting hairs here to some, but that shit drives me crazy. Mealy attack, a mealy attack. That sounds terrible. What are you throwing food at somebody? Sounds terrible. It just why, why? That's all I gotta say. Why? Mealy attack. Yeah. So that was kind of driving me nuts.
like, to the point where I can barely watch the videos. And the thing is, they're good videos. They're like well done videos, and they're videos I want with all my heart and soul to watch. But how do you? I don't even know. Like, how do I broach the subject with somebody? And am I being a dick for doing that? Do I just like, hey, is there like a nice way for me to do that? Hey, guy, on your video, your videos are super good, but honestly, what the fuck is a melee attack? <laughs> Stop saying melee attack. It's melee. Every accepted pronunciation of the word is melee. Melee attack, say it with me. Who is this melee shit? It just needs to go away. It just needs to not be a thing, buddy. Because you know what? Because you know why? Because it's not a thing. I'm here to tell you. Melee attack is not a thing. There are no melees attacking. There is no way to throw meals at people and attack them that way. God, I'm a dick right now. You can say it. Like, just put it in the comments. I'm a dick. Just say, you're a dick, dude. But it... I don't know. Is it... Am I the only person bothered by that? I can't be the only person bothered by that. No way. No way. I can't be the only person bothered by that. Let me tell... Uh, let me tell Blade Wolf I'm, I'm streaming on YouTube. So he can... We can talk about Alchemist on YouTube. Hold on a sec. Got the brush in my mouth. We're talking about melee attack. God damn it. All right. Let's tell him. Tell him. Ugh. 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 It's so slow. Oh my god. Oh my god. All right. All right. Okay. There you go. There. We can talk. Now we can talk melee attack. Stupid melee attack. Anyway, back to 1880s owl and what we are doing up in this piece right here. Like 1880s owl, she knows what a maybe she knows what a melee attack. What kind of shit is a me? Like a I gotta be quiet. I'll be quiet. Like a fine, fine. Whoa. <clears throat> she is she is one of the cooler sculpts in this whole set though. I do like her. Alright, let's look at the let's look at some studio art here. Is this she has kind of a weird gray color? on this like this part of her chest i think i actually have it right i think the only thing i need to do is darken everything else in contrast to that and i think we'll be in good shape right so if i kind of shade this area here I know he I know a guy who says Malay, but like ma ma Malay. I don't know if I'm saying <laughs> Malay. I think if you if you Google it, they say you can say you can say Malay or Malay, which is weird. Mal I think Malay is honestly Malay to me sounds a little more uh, a little more wrong than melee. I don't know. 
Mealy drives me crazy, though. It does. God, how do I... What should I do? Should I just leave a comment like, hey, man, I love your videos, but for God's sake, stop saying Mealy Attack. It's driving me crazy. Ain't nobody ever throw a Mealy Attack at another person. Unless they were beaten... Like, you know, beating you up with a Big Mac or some shit. <laughs> nope. Second one. I know a guy who says Malay, but like Malay. Yeah, I get Yeah, it is. Especially, they've probably been saying it for a long time that way. Probably. And you know what? Two to five years from now, maybe that's it's just going to be accepted. Maybe that's maybe I'm the one. I'm on the wrong side of history here. Maybe I'm the one that uh, you know they're going to look back and like, okay, intolerant asshole, which is wouldn't wouldn't let him say melee attack. It just doesn't sound right to me. <laughs> I don't know, man. You agree with how, how I say it? Okay. <laughs> it, I mean, not only do you agree with how I say it, it's, like I said, when you Google it, that's how they will tell you how to say it. You know, as a noun, it's like, okay, you entered the melee. You, you, were, you were fighting in the melee, not you were in the melee and you threw melee attacks at people. <laughs> It doesn't. It, it, that does. That doesn't play. It's not a thing, guys. <laughs> Thank you for confirming that I'm normal, at least in that regard. I'll accept that. I, I, you know, if you were to say I'm not normal in a bunch of other ways, fine. Okay, I'll 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 agree with you. <laughs> I'm not normal in a bunch of the other ways, but at least in this one regard. The saying melee attack, I'm normal. No, uh -oh. little guy is crying. Oh, okay, mom's on it. Mom is on it. Good. <laughs> Must have attended American high school. <laughs> ah, I am also a product of. Uh, uh, not just American public high school, California public high school. That's some. That is some scary shit, right? That is a. That is a scary admission. To say that uh, I'm a product of California public high school. <laughs> Was that it for her? Does she not even have? Do you have any kind of Google? Oh, yeah, she. Okay. Okay. I thought so. You sorry to hear that? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I attended a uh, California high school here in, uh, in San Bernardino, California, Southern California. And it place is straight up thugs. <laughs> <laughs> and like I attended that high school when uh when it went from being you know when most of the kids attended there well when I was in uh when I was in junior high uh elementary school and junior high in that area most of my classmates were uh you know air force kids because we had a we had a Norton Air Force base um in that community and we went from being Air Force kids, which you know they have their own issues, but they're at least they're they're used to discipline. They're used to a certain amount of rigor. To all those Air Force kids leaving, and then just straight up thugs now living in that area. <laughs> and by the time I graduated my high school, uh, they had 
they had locked down the campus, right? It, it went from an open campus to a closed campus with barbed wire fences and all that shit by the time I got out of high school because the thuggery, the thuggery became a, a became a thing in high school. Um, so I'm going to, I'm just going to drop a little bit of a wash here on this red to kind of bring out a little detail on the red. The rest of this is all right, though. There's not a whole lot, not a whole lot left to do here on 1880s Al. But she is cool. Education institution needs to treat its students like prisoners. Yeah, you know, the weird thing, though, is, um, like, back then, well, this was, when I was going through high school, it was probably four, three to four years after, uh, you know, the big hoopla over, uh, you know, American gangs, the Crips and the Bloods. After that was a major thing. So that was still, you know, those those gang things, gang violence and stuff was still, it would still hit the schools. And, but by the time we were leaving school, it was less of a problem than it was when we started. And maybe, maybe it was the fact that they closed the campus and they tightened up security and all that kind of stuff. Uh, but it's hard to say. And also, I think, though, that the students in our school... After growing up, you know, growing up around that shit where we were done, like that's we, <laughs> we did not, we did not want to have to deal with that anymore. We were, we were done with it. It was not, it was not a good um, thing for us. This guy here is going to require the most amount of detail work. But. He's also like the coolest sculpt, maybe in the entire Court of Owls set. I don't know his name. You guys can tell me if you recognize the character. I've been calling him Jetpack Chesticles just because he looks like, because he's got like a jetpack on his back. And then he's got like these like owl, owl eye chesticles right here. I'm going to close up with this guy. Whoop. Am I doing that right? Yeah, he's. Pretty cool. Like he's got, he's got like a court mask on, and I think he could be Orchard. I think it could be Benjamin Orchard or somebody. Because man, the only reason why I say that is because they don't have a resin version of Benjamin Orchard that I can identify. And you know, Benjamin Orchard had the he had kind of the goofy like hair and the katana in the metal version. And this guy does look like some sort of court member turned Talon. So maybe he is the new Benjamin Orchard. I don't know. Again, I don't know these things. So you guys feel free to educate me. But he's a, he's a really cool miniature. And when you, it's so hard to paint mono monocolor like monochrome minis and completely bury all of the super fine detail that they have built in on these guys right my whole approach to this was you know get a good get a good um zenithal prime pick the right colors and then Everything after that is just super fine uh, washes, glazes, just stuff to to oh, just stuff to accentuate detail, right? I'm not the the last thing I really want to do here is like take a brush to this and and fully paint it out. I think it looks fantastic without doing that. I think that's. And that's probably one of the biggest uh, advantages to painting a night night models is the if you're gonna paint like super ultra fine detail like that, like what's on this, 
you you shouldn't you shouldn't be taking like heavy heavy brush strokes on it you're it should all be designed to just bring out the detail and yeah it's monochromatic color but that's that's the comic book color right you're just using um like super edge highlights and that kind of stuff to draw people's eyes to certain parts of the model that's it that's all you're doing and then you're using those shades and stuff to help uh, help really bring out that the fine level of detail. <clears throat> but yeah, this is the guy I knew I would spend the most amount of time on. And it's not so much that I'm, you know, that. It's not like certain uh, certain miniature companies where they've just loaded, you know, endless amounts of tedious details. This is actually the kind of painting I prefer to do, right? Where you where you can get a good base color down, and then really what you're trying to do is you're just trying to you're just trying to like really kind of let the model speak for itself. Right. Yeah, he did, he looks easy to paint. I think though, I think the mistake that that some people might make when they're painting this mini though is is you know take take a, a, a standard paint and a brush to it and kind of do your your standard paint by numbers. You know, like you don't want to. There's a way I paint night models that's different than how I approach, say, steam forged models. It's not the same thing. I have little knives, if we're talking alchemists, it's all little beakers and, and flasks and that kind of stuff all over the models. The brewers have all those little uh uh like the the little mini kegs, they're on the metal ones. So so Steamforge, painting Steamforge models is about really getting in and, and meticulously picking out all those details. For, for night models, because they're all, you know, monochrome, it's about getting, getting the texture and the lighting correct. You get the texture and the lighting correct on the model, and it's not much painting. Right? You're, you're, like all I'm really doing on this guy is just highlighting, making sure you can see like the little, see all the little nuance in the, the miniature. But like, if you could imagine, what if I just, instead of uh, picking off the edges of this little the detail here on the chest if i decided oh i'm just gonna like paint them in like stripes um it's gonna look weird here you really gotta just kind of go at it pretty delicately right because it's not these aren't hard stripes that you're painting in because at the end of the day the the it is supposed to look like, you know, they're all just wearing black or brown. You just you just want to highlight enough to draw attention to certain things. Edges of the armor, you know, areas where light will fall on top of the model. That's it. It's not much. <clears throat> so how did I do the gray? Uh, like I said, I did a zenithal prime you know, using three airbrush colors, uh, black primer, and then I went, uh, I want to say, I went uh, somber gray and then uh, a really light gray 
at the end of it. And then I washed it with a mix of P3 Armor Wash and German Gray and Glaze Medium. P3 Armor Wash, German Gray, Glaze Medium. And it left me with a super thin, semi-transparent wash that kind of found its way into all the shadow and uh, and left the gray, left the integrity of the gray on the model. Now, here's the other, the opposite problem. If I highlight too much of the armor, then the model does, then the model loses its like shadowy, the shadowy feel to it, right? If I over, if I over highlight, if I pick off e each and every single edge on the model, and I and I pick out the entire length of each edge, the model is going to look. It's going to have way too much white on it. It's not going to look shadowy. It's not going to look uh, like the like a you know like a talon. Like a ninja talons are supposed to look like ninjas essentially. How do you prevent staining and pooling? Um, honestly, I what I did was I made the mixture so thin that when you put it on, you spread it as far as you can go. You just spread it as far as you can go. I guess that's the other way you could do it is treat it more like a wash or a stain and then and then pull off the anything pooling or the excess. Hey, what's up, Dicey guy? Thanks for tuning in. Um, but no, all I did was I just went in super, super thin and then just pushed it as far as it would go. And then that is one thing I, I will say about night models is like they just seem to want to be painted that way. Right. If I were to just take this and go, oh, you know, it's a space brand. I'm just going to block out all the paints and, uh, you know, all the colors and treat it that way. I would kill all of this detail. I would kill all of that fine detail in there. If I actually just went in and tried to paint it, yeah, it was it's it's a, exactly what it was. It's a glaze. I treated the whole thing like I was just glazing. I'm just glazing and highlighting. There's not there's not much to it, and that's kind of the beauty of the whole the whole thing is, right? Like right now, I'm just washing washing these little bits here, and then I'll just come back. Once that glaze is dry, I'll come back and do a little edge highlight on it. Or sometimes you don't, right? It depends. If I don't want that to be a major part in what people stare at. Mustard is buying. Yeah. You know what the best solution to that is, Dicey Guy, if you don't want to buy these mo models, but you, you really like them? Uh, my solution is to commission them. <laughs> That's worked out super well. Like this, this whole, this whole local commission stuff I've got going with, with some of the Batman and Guild Ball players has been awesome because I don't have to, I don't have to own this stuff, right? I don't have to buy it. Somebody actually paid, I get to just paint cool shit and then somebody pays me for it. It's a really cool deal. All right. So I'm going to drop a little highlight here. On top of the little owl eye. Look at that. <laughs> oh man, somebody's messaging me for a game tomorrow. No, the answer is no. I want to play a game so bad. Like, I always want to get in a game. I mean, that's, we got the Guild Ball fever locally. Like, we picked it up again. We got a couple of players going to LVO this Saturday, the Las Vegas Open. They're going to play in the U.S. 
a West Championship. And I am so jealous. I really want to go. But I cannot. My wife asked me what 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 do I want for Valentine's Day? And I said I want tickets to LVO. <laughs> <laughs> that didn't that didn't go over so well. It didn't uh <laughs> that was not uh that was not well received. <laughs> All right. I'm just gonna barely pick off a little bit of the top. He's got weird hair, this guy. It's like patches. Weird, weird hair on that dude. Yeah, I'm I'm super happy with our uh, with our local Gilball community. Um, you know, it took a while to get us there, uh, but I just kept running events, running events and events and events, and teaching people the game and promoting it, and uh, you know, and then you know, really, there's only. There's only so much like a games promoter, like a pundit uh, or a volunteer. There's only so much you can do. It's what what really makes it the whole you know gaming scene take off is when your players, when they start to take the initiative and they start to schedule their games and and they start to bring their friends um, and get more people excited about it. Right? Everybody kind of knows that. The, okay, you're the volunteer. You're going to teach me how to play. But really, the 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 whole thing, the, you know, the community takeoff of a game is is really when when you know all of the the regular players, the participants, go, oh yeah, and uh, I brought a friend this time, or you know, somebody stops by and asks them about the game that they're playing. This happens all the time now. Is like, oh yeah, what game are you playing? Oh, we're playing Guild Ball. And I've I've heard every single one of my local players give that little spiel, like oh it's a low fantasy uh, soccer rugby you know game, and they give the whole spiel, and it's like nice. And the person's like, if they get interested, they're like nice. I want to learn more. Then at that point they go oh well, Octave is our pundit. You know go there he is. He's playing a game over there. Schedule a, a game demo with him. That's really where you want to be. Right. I mean, as the volunteer or whatever, it's great when you, you know, it's great setting things up and getting them going. But if your players don't pick up like that, if they don't pick up that fever and start pushing other people your direction, then it's going to be a much, it's going to be a much more difficult climb. Plan to get a game of Guild Ball going this month, that Mythic Battle Pantheon. Yeah. Mythic Battle Pantheon. Oh get, man, uh, uh, you know, w one of the Nelson, uh, who's a, a friend of the channel here. He's been on the channel. He's uh, he's been asking me to to start looking at painting some of that Mythic Battle Pantheon for him because he's been playing it with another local guy, and they both really must be must be bad times. <clears throat> All right, I'm gonna let me go ahead and paint all of these. And we're gonna paint the the base, the lips of the bases in. If I can find my black, <laughs> there we go. Always something, right? Okay. Was it me? Is it just me that hit the lag spike, or did you guys hit a lag spike watching this? All right. <laughs> Lost connection. Okay. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe that was on my side. Who knows? But 
let's go ahead and paint in the black. So the, the person I'm painting this for is going to LVO. So I don't know. It'd be cool if I could get him his mini, if get him these minis tomorrow, and then they're off my table. If not, I'm gonna have to wait until next week to deliver them. So I'm gonna push and see if he can meet me tomorrow to get these. That would be a good thing. Five minutes lost. Wow. So you missed my whole explanation of Guild Ball really being more like a professional grade miniature uh, game. Like, it's a, it, it really can be played like competitive sport. It's really kind of built for that. Right. I like to say that uh, uh, the Guild Ball is almost the opposite experience that Blood Bowl is because people draw the parallels between the two. And there are certain things that they have in common, but it's they have surprisingly little in common. Right. Blood, the whole the whole um, strength of Blood Bowl is playing a league is player progression and blood bowl never pretends to be a balanced game it, it is not a balanced game it is about managing your team through a season building up their skills dealing with losses uh not just like losses on your record but like players getting injured and dying and all that kind of stuff blood bowl was was has a competitive scene don't get me wrong it does but it's not it's not precision the way guild ball is precision right guild ball is uh it's kind of warm like war machine when, when people used to explain that war machine is a game of inches i mean not inches uh millimeters so is guild ball guild ball is very precise so when you're watching, um, you know, when you watch games of Guild Ball and you see that the the old trusty tape measure that you used to bring to all of your other miniature games is kind of scoffed at in Guild Ball because that's how precise the game is. Like you don't, like tape measures are, are you can start off playing with a tape measure, but if you really want to play a clean game of guild ball then you know you're, you're going to want to invest in some widgets and you're going to want to learn how to use widgets and i think once you learn how to use widgets you'll use widgets in your other skirmish games because i know i do now i'm like i was joking like we're going to play malifo with widgets like screw this tape measure crap it's just not accurate enough <laughs> Yeah, Guild Ball was made was designed by uh, competitive War Machine players, so it was their take. Of, you know, competitive War Machine players essentially what they said was, "Oh, we want to play Blood Bowl, but we want it to we want to keep all that. We want to keep compete keep the the tight nature of rules and and balance that War Machine balance is probably is the wrong word for a War Machine these days, but um, they they wanted to keep that spirit of War Machine and bring it into a miniature sports game like Guild Ball. And I think what they came up with was pretty damn brilliant. So, yeah. So if you like widgets, you like, you know, steppers, templates, really being precise about the position of your, your models and precise measuring and uh, you know, getting all your vectors correct on the board, 
Gil Ball is is gonna be gonna be bread and butter. You know, some of our best players are are uh, engineers and architects for that reason, because they just they think that way. they think precision and they think triangulation and and vectors, angles, and that's all good stuff. That's all good good stuff. To bring to mind when you're playing a game of Guild Ball. Very character driven game. So, kind of like Malifaux, where you have specific characters, uh, very much the same with Guild Ball. You know, you have a, uh, you know, instead of a, a war caster or an, in Malifaux, it's called a master, uh, you have a captain. So, you get cap, you have a captain. Uh, most teams uh, are the format for a, a team is six players. So captain, mascot, and four squaddies. The only exception currently are blacksmiths, where it's three masters and three apprentices, and then you pick one of your masters to be the captain. Cool. No malphone war machine. Good. Yeah, I'm. I'm looking to get back into. Uh, Malifo Open Beta M3E. Um, I've always been a fan of Colette, so uh, so even though I already have a painted Colette crew, I just went ahead and got myself another one. I just ordered another one so I can uh, so I can paint something fresh for this year because I've always loved painting Malifo, even when I wasn't playing it. I mean. I'm not playing it now, but I'm excited. I'm excited to try M3E. M2E didn't really didn't really get me too excited. Felt like it was I felt like M2E had all the clunkiness of 1.5 and none of the charm. <laughs> so, I'm excited for M3E. And I did actually preview some of Colette's cards from the open beta. And I liked what I saw. So you bought Latigos? Cool. So you're going to be playing Guild. That's fun. Yeah. Now, doing a Malfa battle report has never been an easy task. I'm going to have to figure out if I want to do that, I'm going to have to figure out how you do that. I just, it's never, those games like Malifo, Relic Knights, even Batman can be a very difficult game to battle report. I think the 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 only clean format I've seen for those types of skirmish games have been, uh, you know, taking a series of photographs, and you have to take very clean photographs, and then having a good, you know, narrative track over it, explaining everything that's happening, explaining every activation. It's a lot of work, All right? I'd struggled for years to try to figure out a good Malfo battle report format. And I don't think I ever came up with anything great. At least I never came up with anything um, easy to do. Trying to paint these. And I'm going to touch up one base over there, and then we're going to seal up all of these minis. And I'll see if, uh, see if I can drop them off sometime tomorrow night. And if not, so no worries. Soldier Dark Deaths and other crews, McCabe. That was when those were split faction 10T crews, 10 Thunders, 
10 Thunders Guild, 10 Thunders Neverborn. I think that's still the case in M3E. I think you can still run those crews in either faction. All right, so I'm going to, once this dries, I'm going to respond to one text or one message. And then we'll start sealing all these guys. Oh, mistake there on the base. Whoops. A novel store on top of a game would suit mail for good. Yes. Okay. Let's just dry for a second. Let me leave something on screen for us to look at. <laughs> now we're going to. And we're going to seal all of these and the other eight minis that I painted up previously, which all look very similar. Okay. Do that. Let me. Are you going to head out? All right. Thanks for tuning in, Dicey. Let me know how that guild ball game goes, or if you have any specific rules, questions, or anything like that. Hopefully, I can help you out with that. All right. Let me respond to this. Let's see. Cut the hiccups. All righty. So we're going to give these guys the most amount of time to dry. And I'm going to clean out my airbrush and we're going to get some varnish in here. We're going to start spraying the other eight. Oh, shoot, shoot, shoot. Before I do that. There was one base I needed to touch up, and that is this guy, the Gotham Butcher. He had a little nick right there. So let's, I don't even need a decent brush for this. I just need to just splotch a little black paint right there. There we go. All right. Okay. So you can see that's the top of the Gotham Butcher. Now it's, we're going to load up some varnish. We'll seal all these bad boys. Woo! Get that going. All right. Okay, doke. And then what's my next project? Uh, well, I have a couple of options. Uh, one of the projects could be working on uh, my alchemist goal. Probably something I want to do this week. And then I have a couple of just kind of single fun minis I want to work on as well. 
Probably something guild ball. Something, something guild ball. To save that. Malifo probably going to be the weekend project. Unless I, unless uh, another commission comes in. But I don't think, I don't think I have any commissions scheduled for a little bit here. So it should be okay. Let's get some some varnish going. I just like the empty. And I think this I yeah, it actually um, dry. Yeah, it does. A little dry bit. I'm going to get a fair amount of uh, varnish in here. And satin varnish is the way to go here when you're painting this style because paints are, the paints are pretty flat. You can see how flat that black is. It's very flat. So there's the butcher. Turn back. So all these first sets of meanings are all gonna look pretty brown here. Strix. Again, just a little bit of sheen really does help these minis. And some of these O'Malley's. I can't tell the O'Malley's apart. Here's another O'Malley. sure this is Grandpa O'Malley, this guy here. What? What we got? This guy's even Henry something. They're really cool men. This dude, I forget his name. I think Ephraim is his name. Favorite guys, Jiao Long. Love this is just a cool sculpt. Big fan of that guy. You can see all that that first half of the minis were all pretty similar in their color scheme, right? So that's them. And now we're gonna move on to the other um the back half, which is what we painted tonight, okay? So starting with the court member. Okay. 
and the Lady of the Court. Okay, 1880s now. Got Henry Ballard. Then you got this cool guy. I don't even know who he is, but he's cool. And then finally, we got the three owls. Starting here with the barn owl. With the great horned owl. And last but not least, the burrowing owl. models and wasn't sure if I got enough of a protective layer down on. Let's just do I just want to shoot all the all the varnish I can. I think this guy's probably gonna need the most because he's Probably going to see the most contact with the parts of the bag and whatnot. And then, Strix looks pretty good. Let's just give her another. I think that's it. I think the rest of these guys are pretty good. All right. There we go. Okay. All right, guys. Well, that was a lot of quarter vowels. I'm going to take some photos of these tomorrow morning when they're dry. And then, uh, and I'll post them on my social media on uh, Instagram and Facebook. And I think what I'm also going to do is I'm going to start posting more posts on just the YouTube account too, so that you guys can see what's going on, even if I don't happen to cover some painting on YouTube. So uh, just, you know, just added bonus for subscribing to the channel. So with that, we're going to call this uh, feed to a close. I want to thank everyone for watching. Have a good night, guys, and we'll catch you on the next one.